Hey everybody, this is SXE Blues with a surprise review for A Good Man Goes to War, the seventh and final episode in Doctor Who Series 6, Part 1. Uh, wow, this was a crazy episode. Uh, crazy in a good way, definitely, but crazy nonetheless. Uh, my head is still kind of swimming, so you'll have to bear with me. There will be spoilery material all the way through this. If you haven't seen it yet, you're going to, you know, I, I heavily suggest you go watch the episode and then come back to this at some point. But in any case, uh, taking off where we left off in the previous episode, the Doctor is charging toward Demon's Run, an asteroid with an uh, army of villains, I guess you could say, uh, in cahoots with the headless monks, who may or may not be living beings. Um, one, uh, someone commented on my channel somewhere in a previous video that they could be, in fact, the uh, Smilers from Series 5, like the second or third episode of Series 5. I forget the episode title. But uh, in any case, we see that they're truly headless, or at least seemingly, with nothing but a little stump left where their neck should be. But in any case, uh, as I say, this was a crazy episode. The Doctor leads the charge collecting his debts of uh, favors, you know, paid to various villains in the form of a Santaran and Silurians and so on and so forth. And these villains, uh, you know, seem pretty complacent in their mission to best the Doctor. And in a lot of ways, by the end of the episode, I can say they succeeded, I guess. Uh, or, you know, if for no other reason uh, that they got away with Amy's child one version of her, as the case may be. But this is an episode full of revelations. We finally do get an answer of who River Song is. And in a previous video I said, depending on how they did the story, how the episode would play out, if it ended up being that she was Amy and Rory's child, I said I could see being really dissatisfied with that. But this episode definitely silenced any qualms I had about it, because I was more than satisfied. I was uber satisfied with the way the story unfolded. Uh, to see River Song's prophecy about the Doctor being raised higher than he'd ever been uh, in, you know, pretty swift fashion, and then as she also prophesied for him to fall greater than he's ever fallen, uh, I think there's multiple levels of him having fallen. The realization that his name now carries with it danger and uh, mystery and fear. Uh, you know, th this is a good guy who is running away from his people for being that kind of monstrosity, and in a sense he's become that. This kind of touches on uh, previous elements with the Tenth Doctor realizing, you know, look at Davros in, uh, I think Journey's End was the episode title, uh, when he uses Captain Jack and Rose and Mickey and Martha as examples of being lives influenced negatively by the Doctor. Or at least, you know, that was Davros' spin on it. But we see here that this kind of harkens to the heart of the Doctor. Uh, this is something he carries around with him. He wonders this about himself. Am I really becoming the, the type of monster I was running away from all along? And uh, once again, Rory definitely impressed me throughout this episode. Uh, what was once this sort of buffoonish in the background character, he's a take charge guy now. I love him running around in his centurion armor because I feel this is indicative of this change in him. Even though he kind of, you know, looked at it like, oh, it was the doctor's uh, suggestion to wear it and who knows why. I look ridiculous, but I think it was indicative of the maturity of the character. He's a married man now, he's going to save his wife, he's going to save his child, and he's very authoritative. This guy walks into a room full of Cybermen and just holds his own. You know, he, he, he's become like the Doctor in that he walks into that situation, a very dangerous situation, and can, completely keeps his cool and the authoritative tone in his voice massively impressed with Rory I, I hope for Amy and Rory there will be nothing but you know the the uh, what do you call it fairy tale ending you know the the they li they live happily ever after kind of thing 
But getting back to where the episode ends and the Doctor falling uh, greater than he's ever fallen before, that happens, but of course there's a slight rebound with the way the episode ends. Um, and that basically is the reveal of who River Song is. As I say, we finally have that answer, and here she is being the child of Amy and Rory, but it's not all as clear-cut as it seems because, in fact, she has some Time Lord in her. Uh, this is very dramatic for what we've seen previously in this series with the little girl in 1969 regenerating. This finally explains that. That must have been River Song. Unless, you know, we'll find out in later episodes that uh, this group of bad guys, whatever this army is called, has maybe done this to multiple babies throughout the universe. Who knows? But uh, the idea that now we have... This explains everything with River Song. How can she pilot the TARDIS? Because she knows how to pilot the TARDIS. She's part Time Lord. Conceived in the Time Matrix as the TARDIS was traveling through space and time, exactly in touch with Amy's words about this, her fears about could it have an effect on her baby. And as I pointed out in a previous video, we saw that Jackie Tyler, Rose's mother, was much concerned about her own daughter uh, being affected by traveling with the doctor over such a long period of time, exposed to, you know, even though she she wouldn't have known enough to say, oh, it's the time vortex, but she saw in her own daughter a dramatic change. This worried her. So I like the line that uh, the female Silurian who's working with the doctor uh, and the blue guy, Dorian, I guess is the character's name, uh, where they both say something like, leave it to the doctor to ignore the instincts of a mother. And then uh, the Dorian guy says, or, you know, a coward when they say we should get out of here because winning this little uh, battle was all too easy, which turned out to be true. But, uh, yeah, this was definitely well, well written. You know, um, Stephen Moffat has raised the bar as far as I'm concerned because this episode didn't even feel like strict Doctor Who. It was above and beyond that. Uh, definitely had me wondering the whole way through. I mean, there are several little dialogue nods, you know, are we going to get to know who River Song is? And at the point when she reveals herself to the Doctor, and then he goes off gallantly, uh, ready to, you know, fix this problem in time, and every, we're left hanging, I'm thinking, oh great, they're going to end the episode with just another hint, we're not going to get the full answer, but then thankfully Amy pulls a gun on River, which was insane considering who she ends up being, and uh, that reveal comes, I love yet again, it's something integral to Doctor Who. It's the TARDIS's, uh, you know, psychic, whatever you call it, that changes, you know, the language so it can be read readable, uh, interprets the language. And I love the red herrings that we had going into this. Moffat played his cards well. We know that uh, some, you know, script or casting information got leaked. We saw the name Jenny. Everyone was thinking, oh my god, it's the doctor's daughter Jenny coming back. Uh, there were images with a uh, the, I guess, female lover of the Silurian woman uh, from the 1800s that was like decked out in sort of Victorian attire, but in, in sort of a masculine attire. And we all thought, oh my god, this is going to be the female Time Lord, the doctor's daughter and everything. And that completely was untrue. Turned out her name was Jenny, but she was she was just you know a sort of uh, authoritative woman from the 1800s taking action when the doctor called her for help. And then the uh, the character Lorna, very interesting there. I'm not sure if this is the end of this character or if maybe we're, we'll see her appear again. Even though she dies here, think of Doctor Who being timey wimey and her me having met the Doctor as a little girl, chances are we could see in a later story that adventure. But I thought it was very interesting how uh, she was the one and only sympathizer in the army of bad guys that had met the Doctor previously, and it just seems like her story was a little bit bigger than what we've seen in this episode. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, it, they could explore that avenue later on down the line. But 
in any case, this was definitely an amazing episode. And, uh, you know, this review is really not going to be as long as previous ones, a little longer than uh, one of my previous ones, but probably not all the way up to the 15 minutes because I think I've said it all, really. Uh, big thumbs up for me. I can't wait to see where the story continues. I caught the little uh, brief, you know, later in 2011, uh, what we can expect from the second half of Series 6, which I guess is the official name for it. it uh, Moffat hinted that this would be technically Series 6 and 7, uh, you know, but I, I saw in uh, BBC America catalog that they're already planning the release for this first half of the series as Series 6 Part 1, so I guess we can pretty much uh, cumulatively say this is going to be Series 6 Parts 1 and 2. But in any case, the final six episodes, I can't wait to see where Moffat's going to take us and uh, the other writers involved, but this little teaser uh, shows a skeletal hand holding a sonic screwdriver that slowly fades out, and uh, at least one of the videos I saw hints that the episode may be called something like Let's Kill Hitler. Um, okay, WTF on that. But uh, in any case, I'm just ecstatic with this episode. It blew my mind. Uh, and I know a friend on YouTube, Hal, uh, he said the same thing. And uh, now on to some of my friends on YouTube's reviews. I can't wait to see what they thought of it. So I hope you enjoyed this review, and I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you haven't seen it yet, damn you for listening to this, because I just ruined the whole episode for you. But go check it out. So uh, this is SXE Blues signing off for now. Peace.